Expert Systems Lesson 3. So in this video we're going to be talking about online processing, batch processing, real-time processing and transaction and master files. So this is the last video on Expert Systems and uh, so let's see how this goes. So what is a batch processing system? So a batch processing system is a system that processes batches of data at set time intervals. Data is collected in batches from inputs and stored until a time that is set when these batches of data are processed and an output is produced. So an example of batch processing to keep in mind as we go through these slides is a payroll system. So you can just imagine that we can collect the information about each employee in batches, right? And, and this information can include the employee's work hours and how much they get paid per hour. Then at a set time, which could be, for example, like at the end of the month, you can then process the batches of data. You can then calculate the amount of money that each employee has to be paid for that month. And an output is produced so they can each get a pay slip, for example. So if you're talking about batch processing, the most common example is a payroll system. How does batch processing help? By storing the data together in batches, it means that the processing can be carried out at a time when the system is in less demand. How does this help? This causes less disruption to a system during the times of the day when it could be in heavy demand or use. So for example, in a batch processing system in terms of payroll, the payroll only has to be calculated at the end of the month um, and that causes less disruption to the system throughout the entire month. And for example, you can calculate the payroll during the night, for example, when no one's actually using the system because the computer can do it all itself. An example of batch processing system, okay, like we said, the most common one is a payroll system. So payroll systems, data about how many hours an employee has worked in a month, along with their hourly pay rate, um, will be collected and stored in batches until they need, until they, they need to receive their pay. The data is then processed at a set time, which could be at the end of the month, for example, and the pay is calculated and a pay slip can be outputted to show this. Since it is not essential to have an employee's pay calculated until they are due to be paid, this process can occur at a time when the system is in less demand. So an example, at night, on the day that you want to calculate their pay, at the end of the month, the system can then use its processing power to do other tasks during the day. Is there user interaction with a batch processing system? Right? Do people get involved while it is processing the batches of data? No, there's no user interaction. The system will automatically process the data when the set time is reached. What are possible issues with batch processing? If there is an error with the input, this error will only be noticed after the data is processed. So for example, the payroll system, if maybe the employer puts in the, or the system has an incorrect amount of working hours for a specific employee, then that error will probably only be picked up once all the data has been processed and you get an output from that processing. Um, another possible issue is because there's a time delay for processing of the data, outputs are not readily available. All right, so the processing could take some time, for example, so like a payroll system, it will take the entire night maybe to do all the processing for the employees to work out their pay. And also, for example, in a payroll system, since the processing only has to be done at the end of the month, you'd have to wait until the end of the month in order to get your pay slip. All right, or the output from that processing. What is an online processing system? An online processing system is a type of processing system that deals with data in transactions. Online booking systems are examples of online processing. So I'm sure most of you have already seen how to book tickets online. So examples here are concert tickets, movie tickets, etc. What is a real-time processing system? This is where processing of data is immediate or instant. Okay, it has to be immediate, the processing. So we'll see some examples now. Air traffic control, video games, etc. are examples of where real-time processing is used. So we're going to discuss these examples in the next few slides. Describe air traffic control as a real-time processing system. 
in an air traffic control system, the information must be distributed in real time. It has to be immediate. This is very important. Data about where planes are at any given moment must be known. This helps to avoid collisions, for example. Right, so if you don't know the exact location of any plane at any given moment in time, that is very dangerous. So collisions can occur if you don't know their location at every single moment. Okay. Information is instant, must be known immediately, else there may be severe consequences. Explain computer games as a real-time processing system. Okay, so when playing video games, the input from the user has to be processed immediately. All right, I'm sure you, when, you've, when you've probably played games online, you, when you press the forward button to make your character to go forward, you want them to move forward immediately. So there has to be a real-time processing system involved there. When the user presses the button to move forward, for example, then the gamer must do so straight away, so the processing must be immediate. What are master files? Okay, so in a business, for example, you get two types of files to work with most of the time. They're master files and transaction files. So master files, that's a file that stores data that is of permanent nature. All right. So this is data that usually does not change. So here are some examples. A person's full name usually doesn't change. Neither does their surname and neither does their work ID at a business. So any data that does not change is going to be considered to be part of the master file. All right, so these are just examples. So what is a transaction file? All right, so the master file was permanent in nature. So the transaction file is a file that stores data that is temporary in nature. So it contains data that may change. All right, so it's, that is not permanent. Examples of such data are hours worked by employee that will always vary. Maybe sometimes employees work 10 hours a day, maybe 8 hours, it will always change. And the date that they worked those hours will also be changing in the transaction file. So for example, over here, on the 10th of the 4th, 2020, they might have worked 10 hours, and then the date will change again for the next recording of hours worked. So on the 11th of the 4th, 2020, they might work 8 hours, for example. Okay, so the dates and hours worked will always change for employees that is of temporary nature all right so i hope that made a bit of sense if there's anything that um, is unclear please let me know i hope that was all right